Hey, 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 guys, Old Man G here back again with a post match reaction. And as the title says, Magnificent McTominay, Magnificent McTominay, man of the match today, in my opinion. And guys, there was a lot of negativity coming into this game. I did say in a previous video, watch it and give that a like, um, that um, we need to be positive because, frankly, when you look at Chelsea, when you look at Tom, there's a, the point difference right now is there's not that much difference between between us. Yes, maybe Chelsea playing a bit better football, but from a point perspective, we are still within the race of top four. Of top four, and frankly, getting top four with this squad this season with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be a miracle anyway. So we should bear that in mind. And so going into this game, that's the context. Going into this game, yeah, you look at the selection as I predicted and thought, okay. Matt and, Matt and Matic, hmm, and again, they did slow the game down, but you know what, we get a penalty, Rashford scores, boom, 1-0 to Manchester United, happy days. Leicester, they put the pressure on us in the first half and towards the second half, but the key thing is Solskjaer, 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 he makes two key substitutions in Fred and Sean coming on, relieves the pressure, and we end the game the last 30 minutes on top, deservedly winners in my opinion. So yes, positivity here, we... We go again, we be positive, we back the team. And a key thing, I think, from this game is that um, that Solskjaer learns to look forward now. You know, the whole thing of experience, of experience, experience, experience. You know, Ashley Young, fair play to Ashley Young. He's coming to do a job because Dallin and Shaw injured. Fair play. But we can't be relying on experience anymore. Like, the new youth, the people, they just want opportunities to come and play and, and, and show. Matt and Matic, frankly, are done at level and, and should be only be left to play... Um, Europa League games, okay? We have our uh, first U Europa League game coming Thursday, and I expect to see Chong, I expect to see Garner, I expect to see Gomez, I expect to see Greenwood, I expect to see Swan C, but I expect to see the up-and-coming talent for Manchester United coming in, you know, because the reality is, is that we need to start to, start to see these players given opportunities when you, the likes of your Matic and Matic's, you know, just... Franklin aren't fast enough and aren't good enough anymore. But anyway, well done to Manchester United. I think we played really, um, really well in this game. Scott McTominay is my man of the match. He just, he he stepped up when Pogba's gone. And there's a question, arguably, of what is our best midfield? Is it McTominay, Pereira and Fred? Because if people remember, that was the midfield that we went away with to PSG and won. You know, we we beat PSG, a top European side, at, in Paris with a midfield of McTominay Fred, uh, McTominay, Fred, and Pereira. So, I don't know how long Pop was going to be out for, but I'd be interested to see if we start with that midfield for Fred, McTominay, and Pereira, how, what we can do. Because if that midfield, if that midfield works, it's a possibility that you might make a case for dropping Pogba. But I won't say that just yet, because I think the difference to me is the holding mid, is that holding midfield defensive role that Fred could come into play. And giving us a good attacking option on the right in the, in the case of um, of like a Chong or maybe a Greenwood. Daniel James, you know, his natural position is the left. Keep him playing the left. So to be honest, when Marshall comes back, you stick Marshall up top because he's a better finisher. You put Daniel James on the left and then it just becomes between who do you play? Do you play Rashford? Do you play Lingard? Do you play Chong? Do you play Greenwood? You know, or you alternate maybe between Martial and Rashford up top. Something like that to give the competitive edge thing. That's what I think you do. Um, so, yeah, player ratings will come later. But what do you think, guys? You know, hit smash that like button, you know, um, if, you, if you're really happy that Manchester United have beaten Leicester. Amazing, amazing, amazing performance, the guys. Let's carry this positivity in the next game. I think it's very, very important that we just carry this positivity on. Um, it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be tough. And Leicester might feel they were unlucky if, if the penalty was a bit soft. But to be honest, we still, I think, overall, we're probably, we're probably the better team. Shout out again to David De Gea, who made some fantastic saves. Shout out to Wan Bissaka, who is just a defensive rock at that right back. We just, he's just solid. And he's just has a solid 7 out of 10 performance every single game. Maguire showing why we why we bought him to be honest because again, you know, he's he's been he's he's, he's stabilized the defense, the leader of the back and that's what we need, especially Lindelof who appears to be a bit shaky at times. Um like I said Pereira fine, you know, Daniel James fine, Rashford, you know, all the team today today, you know, bar Matt uh, uh Matic in particular. Um, who seemed to be surprised when he was getting subbed off, you know, um, 
work, played very, very well. Um, so roll on, roll on the away game against West Ham, which if we can win that game, if we can beat West Ham, um, then, you know, we can start recovering our season, to be honest. We can start because I think the next one of games we have, and I'll post, we'll post a, we're doing a Red Devil Studio Live tomorrow um, about United's run because, as I said, the first five games this season were going to be a tough, going to be a tough run in. Um, and to be honest, I thought like the games we won, I expected us to drop points. I expected us to beat um, Crystal Palace and Southampton comfortably. We dropped points against Crystal Palace and Southampton. We dropped um, five points in the loss against Crystal Palace at home. And then obviously Southampton, we dropped um, two points. Chelsea at home, um, Chelsea at home and Leicester at home, I expect us to drop points. Maybe, maybe get a draw. ID get four points out of it. And we win both of those games, you know. So, and Wolves, I kind of expect us to get a draw there. Although, to be honest, looking at the game, we should have won it. So, when I look back at the games, and this is why I keep on trying to tell United fans, is that those were drop point games. Those weren't games that we deservedly deserve to lose or to drop points. Those were games where really we threw those points away. We could, we literally could be in a situation where if, if Pogba scores the penalty, if, if, um, and um, uh, if Pogba scores the penalty, and and Crystal Palace, you know we the, and Crystal and we score that penalty against in Crystal Palace as well, then we you know we're we're in touching distance with Liverpool slash coming for the title, you know. So just bear that in mind, young fans. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. Um, glory, glory, Manchester United. Thanks for listening, guys. Please do a, give a like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, We United X, for all that good stuff. Smash that notification button to get the latest news. Have a nice evening, guys, and cheers.